Here we're given matrix A, which is a three by three matrix. We're asked to find the eigenvalues of matrix A and then find a corresponding eigenvector for each lambda that is a unit vector. So we'll first find the eigenvalues by solving this equation here for lambda, where we have the determinant of the difference of lambda i and A equals zero. And then we'll find all the eigenvectors of A corresponding to each lambda, which are the non-zero solutions to this equation here. Once we find the eigenvectors, we'll then find a unit eigenvector for each lambda. So here's the setup of the first equation to find the eigenvalues. This is the matrix lambda times i, where i is the three by three identity matrix. The difference of these two matrices will give us a determinant shown here. We'll notice how for the first row we have lambda minus two, zero minus negative two is positive two, zero minus three is negative three, and so on. So to evaluate this three by three determinant, we'll use expansion by minors of the cofactor method using row one. So the first element in row one is the quantity lambda minus two. And then we'll have times the two by two determinant for my eliminating row one and column one, which will give us lambda minus three, two, one, and lambda minus two. Then we have minus, the next element in row one is two, times a two by two determinant formed by eliminating row one, column two. So we have zero, two, zero lambda minus two plus the third element in row one is negative three and then we have times the determinant for my eliminating row one column three so we'd have zero lambda minus three zero one and this must equal zero and now the value of each two by two determinant is equal to this product minus this product so we have the quantity lambda minus two times the quantity lambda minus three times the quantity lambda minus two minus two times one. And then we have minus two times, here we'll have zero minus zero, which is zero. This will be minus three times zero minus zero, which is zero. So we have the quantity lambda minus two times, let's find this product here, so we have lambda squared minus two lambda minus three lambda, that's minus five lambda plus six, but then we have minus two. And of course this is zero and this is zero. So this product equals zero. Continuing on the next slide, six minus two is four. So we have the quantity lambda minus two times the quantity lambda squared minus five lambda plus four equals zero. This trinomial factors. So we'll have two more binomial factors. The factors of lambda squared are lambda and lambda. The factors of four that add to negative five, negative four and negative one. So we have three solutions. We have lambda equals two, lambda equals four, and lambda equals one. So we have three eigenvalues for the matrix A. Let's call it lambda sub one equals one, lambda sub two equals two, and lambda sub three equals four. So this is the first part of our question. Now we want to find the eigenvectors corresponding to these eigenvalues so that we can then find a unit eigenvector for each lambda. So to find the eigenvectors of A corresponding to each lambda, we want to find the non-zero solutions to this vector equation here. And again, I've already set this up. Here we have the difference of lambda i in matrix A times vector x, which is the eigenvector, equals a zero vector. The difference of these two matrices gives us this matrix here. We're letting the components of vector x be x sub one, x sub two, and x sub three, and here's a zero vector. So now for lambda sub one equals one, we substitute one for lambda to form our matrix equation. So when lambda is equal to one, this first row would be one minus two, that's negative one, two, negative three. The second row would be zero, one minus three is negative two, two, and the third row would be zero, one, negative one, times vector x equals a zero vector. Now let's write this matrix equation as an augmented matrix, and then write the augmented matrix in reduced row echelon form. 
So the first row would be negative one, two, negative three, zero. Second row would be zero, negative two, two, zero. Third row would be zero, one, negative one, zero. We've already written several of these in reduced row echelon form, so we'll write down this to save some time. This is the reduced row echelon form of the given augmented matrix. Notice how we have a row of zeros, which indicates we have an infinite number of eigenvectors. But notice how this first row tells us that x sub one minus two x sub two plus three x sub three must equal zero. And the second row indicates that x sub two minus x sub three must equal zero. Let's go ahead and solve this first equation for x sub one. So we'd have x sub one equals two times x sub two minus three times x sub three. And the second equation we can write as x sub two equals x sub three. So now to give the eigenvectors corresponding to lambda equals one, let's parameterize this relationship by letting x sub three be equal to t. So if x sub three is equal to t, the eigenvectors would have to have a z component of t, and because x sub two equals x sub three, the y component would also be t. And so if x sub two and x sub three are both equal to t, notice x sub one is equal to two t minus three t, or negative t. So this would be one way to express the eigenvectors corresponding to lambda equals one. We could also write this as t times the vector with an x component of negative one, a y component of one, and a z component of one, where again t can't equal zero because the eigenvector must be a non-zero solution. But the question asks for a unit eigenvector. So for one eigenvector, if we let t equal one, we'd have the eigenvector v with an x component of negative one, a y component of one, and a z component of one, which means a unit eigenvector would be equal to vector v divided by the magnitude of vector v. The magnitude of vector v would be equal to the square root of negative one squared plus one squared plus one squared, which would be the square root of three. So one unit eigenvector would be the vector with an x component of negative one divided by square root three, a y component of one divided by square root three, and a z component of positive one divided by square root three. But we could also give the unit vector in the opposite direction so let's call this unit vector sub one, and let's say unit vector sub two, again, could be the opposite unit vector, so we would just change the sign of each component. So we'd have one divided by square root three, negative one divided by square root three, and negative one divided by square root three. Either of these last two unit vectors would be a unit eigenvector corresponding to lambda sub one equals one. Now I need to go through the same process for lambda sub two and lambda sub three. So for lambda sub two equals two, we substitute two for lambda in our matrix equation. So our matrix here would be zero, two, negative three, then zero, negative one, two, and zero, one, zero. So the corresponding augmented matrix would be a three by four matrix, where the first row would be zero, two, negative three, zero. Second row would be zero, negative one, two, zero. Third row would be zero, one, zero, zero. The next step is to write this in reduced row echelon form, which again, to save some time, I've already done. Notice how this first row indicates that x sub two minus three halves x sub three equals zero, and the second row indicates that x sub three must equal zero. So let's write this first equation as x sub two equals three halves times x sub three, and x sub three equals zero. So the eigenvectors corresponding to lambda sub two equals two would have to have a z component of zero because the z component is x sub three. Well, if x sub three is equal to zero, notice x sub two is also equal to zero. So let's go ahead and let x sub one or the x component be equal to t. So this is one way to express the eigenvectors corresponding to 
lattice of two equals two, we could also write this as t times the vector with an x component of one and a y and z component of zero. But we're asked to find a unit eigenvector corresponding to lambda. Notice how if we let t equal one, we would just have the eigenvector one comma zero comma zero, which is a unit vector. So a unit vector could be the vector with an x component of one and a y and z component of zero, or let's call this vector u sub one. Vector u sub two could be the unit vector in the opposite direction, which would be negative one, zero, zero. Either of these two vectors would be acceptable. And now we need to find a unit eigenvector for lambda sub three equals four. So lambda sub three equals four. So substituting four for lambda into our matrix equation, we'd have two, two, negative three, then zero, one, two, and zero, one, two. So again, the corresponding augmented matrix would be two, two, negative three, zero. Second row would be zero, one, two, zero. Third row would be zero, one, two, zero. The next step would be to write this in reduced row echelon form, which again, to save some time I've already done, here's the reduced row echelon form of the augmented matrix. So looking at row one and row two, row one tells us that x sub one minus seven halves times x sub three must equal zero. And the second row tells us x sub two plus two times x sub three equals zero. Let's write this first equation as x sub one equals seven halves x sub three. And let's write the second equation as x sub two equals negative two times x sub three. Let's parameterize this using t so we can say that the eigenvectors corresponding to lambda equals four would be the vectors in the form if x sub three of the z component is equal to t, then x sub two of the y component would be negative two t, and the x component, or x sub one, would be equal to seven halves t. Now if they want to clear this fraction here, we could multiply by two. Two times this vector would give us a vector with an x component of seven t, a y component of negative four t, and a z component of two t or we could also write this as t times the vector with an x component of seven, a y component of negative four, and a z component of two. Where again, t can't equal zero. So this would be all the eigenvectors corresponding to lambda equals four. Remember, our goal is to find a unit vector. So if we let t equal one, one eigenvector, vector v, would have an x component of seven, a y component of negative four, and a z component of two. So if we wanted to find a unit eigenvector, we could let the unit vector be equal to vector v divided by the magnitude of vector v, where the magnitude of vector v, we'll show this one, is equal to the square root of seven squared plus negative four squared plus two squared, which is equal to the square root of 49 plus 16 plus four, is equal to 69. So the magnitude is equal to the square root of 69. So one unit eigenvector would be the vector with an x component of seven divided by the square root of 69, a y component of negative four divided by the square root of 69, and a z component of two divided by the square root of 69. So this would be one unit eigenvector, let's call it vector u sub one, but we could also give the unit eigenvector in the opposite direction, so let's say vector u sub two, which would just be the opposite vector, so we'd have negative seven divided by the square root of 69, positive four divided by the square root of 69, and negative two divided by the square root of 69. Either of these two unit vectors would be correct. I hope you found this helpful.